the Sure 135mm T2.9 1.8 time squeeze. No, not a 1.6, not a 1.33. 1.8. This thing is an absolute beast and actually works really well with the 1.6 times squeeze. Now, the biggest thing when it comes to longer focal lengths is that you're actually going to get a little bit more background compression and the oval bokeh is much more pronounced with a 1.6 times on a longer focal length, but this is a 1.8 times without that adapter. Now, if you remember the last set that comes with the anamorphic adapter, which gives you approximately two times anamorphic squeeze, this one is 1.8 0.8 by itself, but it still works perfectly with the other lenses. Now, this one is the latest one in their edition, but still, they do have that new carbon fiber one, which is extremely small. It's the world's smallest anamorphic lens at this time when it comes to full frame lenses. It's phenomenal by itself. I've got actually the neutral flare, so be sure to tune in for that one. But this one is about this. And that intro was shot not just with this, but the other anamorphic lenses in the set as well. So anyway, let's jump into some of the specs on this and then we can talk about what the image quality is going to be like on this thing. So the Sure 135 millimeters is a T2.9 to a T16. It has an anamorphic squeeze ratio of 1.8 times, a minimum focusing distance of 0.9 centimeters or three feet, a front filter thread diameter of 82 millimeters and it weighs a total of 1300 grams, which is a little bit lighter than the 100 millimeter 1.6 time squeeze. Now, 135 millimeters isn't a lens that you're going to be putting on absolutely every time. There are a few different circumstances where you're actually going to be utilizing this, and most likely it'll be for close-ups, medium close-ups maybe, or even extreme close-ups. You still have that very similar minimum focusing distance of about sort of 90 centimeters, almost a meter, but on a longer focal length, you're obviously going to get closer to the talent, which is going to make this thing pop even more. And obviously when you get closer to your subject, you're gonna get much more depth of field, but also this is going to really accentuate the oval bokeh and the anamorphic qualities of these lenses. So this is the 135 millimeter T2.9 at its minimum focusing distance of 90 millimeters. And this is the 100 millimeter T2.9 at its minimum focusing distance of 93 millimeters. This is the 75 millimeters at minimum focusing distance of 85 millimeters. The 50 millimeter T2.9 at 80 millimeters minimum focusing distance. And the 35 millimeter T2.9 at its minimum focusing distance of 85 millimeters. Now in terms of the oval bokeh, it's actually more prominent in the 100 millimeters and that's only a 1.6 times squeeze, whereas the 1.8 doesn't really have as oval bokeh as I thought it would actually have, considering that it is the 1.8 times anamorphic squeeze. Now to make sure that I get the correct squeeze factor, all I do is utilize my lens chart right here, grab a circle, and then pretty much just de-squeeze it to the correct ratio that I've actually got it on the screen, and that's how I actually get my de-squeeze ratio. So to get the perfect de-squeeze factor in your post-production, all you need to do is click on uniform scale and scale it down to 57.5 or approximately 57 or 58. And that's about a 1.8 time squeeze when you're using a 16 by nine sensor. So now with this 135 millimeters, it actually has 135 millimeters in the height, but when it comes to the width, it's very similar to a 75 millimeter focal length on full frame. Now, if you do want to get closer with any kind of anamorphic lenses, all you need to use is close up filters or diopters. These ones, I will link in the description below, but I've got these ones. They're quite cheap off Amazon or eBay. I can't remember one of the ones. I'll link it in the description below, but they're the type of filters that you actually throw on the front here for just those rare shots that you need extreme close ups for. So, anyway, what kind of flares do we get out of this thing in comparison to the other versions that they've got right now?
So when it comes to the 1.8 time squeeze, what is it like at the minimum focusing distance and obviously at the longest focusing distance? Because uh, we do know that the Sure ones tend to change. And is this one the same as the others? So this is at the minimum focusing distance of 90 millimeters. And uh, this one is at about two meters further back. And it seems to be focusing pretty much exactly the same when it comes to that squeeze factor. It's consistent at 1.8 times squeeze. So if you are filming close-ups and you're wanting to pull to the background, you're not gonna get any sort of distracting squeeze change. Now, in terms of the closest focusing distance, this is how close you can actually focus on a human face. And if you do wanna get a little bit closer, that's where you're going to have to use those close-up filters. So this is technically called a four times close-up filter, and this is how close you can actually get. But one of the biggest things about these close-up filters is that you're going to have to stop down the lens, and this is at T5.6 because the depth of field is super shallow. So you have to stop it down so you can actually increase the depth of field so you can actually get something in focus. Now I have to discuss this because this is one of the most misinterpreted things about these lenses and that is the focus throw. Now a lot of people don't like the focus throw on here and they do think it's a little bit too small. I don't understand why people would be complaining with that because if anything, if the focus throw is like almost 360 degrees with the side handles, you're gonna have to wind it a few times and that can actually be extremely annoying, especially if you do have a manual one. If you do have an automatic one, a, a wireless one, that does make it a little bit easier, but it really just depends on what system you're using. And I don't think it's a disadvantage whatsoever. And sure, it does come down to individual skill when actually pulling focus anyway. And the larger the focus throw, generally it does make it a little bit easier because you've got more room to play with. It just really depends on how you're actually utilizing these lenses and what your personal preference actually is. Now, I think Sure's last step is to produce a PL or EF mount of these ones. And I know that they can do it because there are other brands out there that are currently doing it. So I think they're gonna be onto those surely for those you know, PL users and obviously EF people as well. And I think at the time of you're watching this, it is probably on Indiegogo or Kickstarter right now. So, you know, jump on there and you can get onto these ones. I've got a whole bunch of other reviews, obviously, of their anamorphic lenses. So you can check that out. I'll leave the link in the description below, or you could probably just uh, search for my YouTube. It'll be on there. I've shot a whole bunch of projects on these lenses as well. And they are absolutely here to stay. I guarantee you that. And thank God, Sure are bringing the quality budget anamorphics to all of us consumers out there to utilize and create the best art possible. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That'd be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And uh, obviously the link will be in the description below if you do want to check these ones out or the other ones. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.